mystery of them all, whether time is eternal. Over the last hundred years, it's become increasingly clear that our universe, and hence time itself, had a beginning. But that raises another question. If time had a beginning, will it also have an end? Humanity has long pondered the origins of time and the universe. Almost every religion that has ever existed has had its own creation myth. When I was a child, I remember being so confused about how we got here. And that's because I was brought up in between two faiths with two very different views on creation. On the one hand, there was Christianity. At Sunday school, I learned all the Old Testament stories. Among them, the book of Genesis, describing how the universe came into being in a single moment of divine creation. On the other hand, my parents were both Buddhists. From them, I discovered that Buddhists believe the universe is timeless, without either beginning or end. For some time, I continued to struggle with these two seemingly incompatible doctrines. Either the universe had a beginning or it didn't. Either time is eternal or it isn't. It's only in the last 40 years or so that we think we've found the answer. An answer that comes from the furthest reaches of space. The amazing thing about looking up into the night sky is that it's like gazing at a cosmic map of the past. Every planet, every star is like a snapshot taken when their light first left them. The further the star, the more ancient its origins. But for centuries, the limits of the universe were a total mystery, until one man peered further into the heavens than ever before. In doing so, he gave us a better understanding, not just of our universe, but of time as well. Perched high in the hills above Los Angeles in Southern California is the Mount Wilson Observatory. In 1919, it saw the arrival of an ambitious new astronomer named Edwin Hubble. Don Nicholson remembers Hubble from regular visits to Mount Wilson as a young boy. Hubble, certainly as an astronomer, uh, was a very skilled, a very dedicated, uh, very effective uh, astronomer. He was highly respected uh, for his professionalism. Hubble's arrival more or less coincided with completion of the world's then most powerful telescope, capable of looking further into space and hence further back in time than ever before. Most astronomers felt that uh, our galaxy was the universe, and for many, that even that the solar system was at the center of that universe. But on the evening of October 4th, 1923, Edwin Hubble noticed a tiny speck 
deep within the Andromeda Nebula. Before that time, there was no telescope in the world, for example, that could resolve individual stars in these spiral uh, nebula. And so there was belief that they were simply gaseous objects in our own galaxy. But Hubble was able to prove that his speck was indeed a star, and incredibly, that it was more than a million light years away, much too far to be part of our own galaxy. In one stroke, Edwin Hubble had destroyed the notion that our Milky Way was the sum total of the universe. And if the universe was much bigger, then it also had to be far, far older. But how much older was still a mystery. Every Thursday, a whole bunch of fans congregate at this drag strip to enjoy the sights, the smells, the sounds of these muscle cars. These unmistakable sounds are created by the same phenomenon that enabled Edwin Hubble to make his second great discovery. The sound of a car will always depend on the direction it's traveling. A car moving towards me sounds high-pitched. But a car moving away from me sounds lower-pitched. This shift in pitch, known as the Doppler effect, is due to the fact that at the front of a moving car, sound waves are compressed. While at the back, they're stretched out. And what's true of sound is also true of light. As light moves away from us, its waves too become stretched. By measuring this effect, called the redshift, in one galaxy after another, Edwin Hubble realized that not only were they all incredibly distant, they were all moving away from us. In other words, the universe was expanding. If the universe was expanding, then it had to be expanding from something. From an event whose soundtrack is still with us today. What I'm listening to now are some of the sweetest sounds ever, the sounds of creation. Waves of light from the beginning of time have been stretched so much that we can't really see them anymore. Instead, we can pick some of them up on the radio in the form of static. Although he didn't know it at the time, Hubble's discovery that the universe was expanding led to one of the most important breakthroughs ever made about time, the Big Bang. Once, there was nothing, not even time. But 13.7 billion years ago, it seems that this nothing became everything. When a tiny dot of infinite density spontaneously expanded at a phenomenal rate, giving birth to the universe and everything within it, including time. But if time had a beginning, does that also mean that time will have an end? 